for this assignment, you will draw 25 shapes and then make them look three-dimensional by drawing lines to one vanishing point. So this is one point perspective. And what I've got here is an example of student work. Um, this would get a pretty good grade. There are a few things that aren't quite correct. There's no lines here. Some of the shading is a little bit off. But overall, this is a good example of what you need to do. I've got another example here of student work where she went a little above and beyond and would get some extra credit. So she got a little more creative. And please do that if you think you can. Okay, here I've already drawn 25 shapes. I've established a vanishing point. Now really you can put your vanishing point wherever you want. I put it a little bit up in a, to the right of the middle of the paper. Just to be a little creative, if you want to put it up here, over here, you can do that too. If you want to be conservative, you can put it right in the middle. That's probably the easiest thing to do. And you'll notice a lot of my shapes overlap. Please overlap your shapes. It just gives it some more depth and makes it look more interesting. So by, to overlap shapes, I just, for example, drew this shape on top of the circle and made sure that line was erased so this shape looks like it's on top of that. Now I'm going to take my ruler and get started. Every time there's a corner, I need to draw to the vanishing point. And you need to draw lightly because a lot of these lines you will be erasing as you cut them off from the vanishing point to create cubes and other things. Anytime there's a curve, you line your ruler up with the vanishing point, swing that ruler over until you hit the outer edge of the curve, draw it to the vanishing point. Same thing underneath, I'm going to line the ruler up with the vanishing point, swing it up until I hit that curve, and draw. So anytime you can hit an outer edge of a curve, you know you need to do a line to the vanishing point. Got a bunch of circles here. So if a circle is on top, or any shape is on top of another shape, those lines are going to go over any shape that's underneath it. Okay, so this circle is in front of this blob shape behind it, so I can erase any of those lines that are behind that circle. And immediately my shapes are starting to pop off the page and look three-dimensional. I'll just do a few more of these. So there will be a lot of erasing done. Make sure in the beginning that you draw lightly. All right, once you have completed all of your lines to the vanishing point, you need to think about cutting off your shapes. So I'm going to cut off this circle right here. And notice I just did a line. That line would be incorrect because our rule for this is what or the back is the same as the front. So the back of this circle needs to be the same as the front. So what I really need to do right here is draw another circle. And then erase whatever I wouldn't see. Which is most of it. I just want to leave this outer curve here. cylinder shape. Okay, maybe this circle, which is in front of that one, I'm going to do another little line right here. I'm just going to make this a little bit of a disc. Draw another circle. When you do perspective, you're making all sorts of decisions all the time. Like I could have taken that circle and made it into a longer cylinder. standing down and then I would have had to erase some of this which it would have been in front of. So there's a lot of play, a lot of experimentation. Now this blob right here that I erased earlier I'm going to have to put back because this didn't extend as far as I originally thought it would. Okay. The back is the same as the front on this rectangle. This line's going straight up and down. So the back side of it needs to go straight up and down. I can erase that and I have that cube. Okay, this 
this little arrow point thing. I'll draw all the way to the vanishing point. I'm going to skip over where that circle is because I'm going to say the circle's in front of it. Okay. The back of this is the same as the front. So to get that back line correct, I'm going to line my pencil up with this line right here. And then my ruler, so it's perpendicular, I mean parallel to the pencil. And then I'll draw that line in. So this line is going parallel to the front. The back is the same as the front. I'll do the same thing here. Line my pencil up the front. Now I need to lightly draw in the rest of this line so I know where to put the ruler. I need to line the ruler up where this line hits this line. Make sure it's parallel to the front. Draw that line in and I'll erase this. Okay, once you've established all your shapes, made them into cubes, cut them off from the lines that go to the vanishing point, then you need to decide where you want your light source to come from. So I'll say my light source is coming from the middle above. That means I need to shade according to where the light source is from. So underneath this cylinder would be dark. And I'm going to gradually get light as I go up. Okay, and same thing on this one. Alright, and I'll also put a little bit of value on the side here. Now I'm doing it quick. You take your time and make it nice and smooth. Okay. You'll complete the entire thing, take a picture, scan it, or bring it to me to complete your assignment.